Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Queer View Mirror, the show that is about queer people, by queer people, for queer people, and our allies. I am Dawn. Hi, and I'm Scott. I'd like to start by acknowledging that I'm recording and broadcasting today on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people. I am grateful for being able to work, play, and live on the shared territory of the Snanaas and Qualicum First Nations. Oh, and in like manner then, I am Dawn, and I'm coming to you from the unceded territories of the Teshat and Hupacheset peoples, where I live, love, work, and play all day, experiencing my wonderful Alberni Valley experience. <laughs> And you're probably wondering why we're doing this on Zoom for this episode, and I will relegate the explanation to my dear co-host, Scott. <laughs> Have you looked out the window lately? <laughs> We've well, had it's to not as bad now. <laughs> no, it's not. We've had to cancel uh, four tapings, is it? Mm -hmm. um, because of the weather. Um, anybody who's in BC knows we've experienced sinkholes and washouts and roads and ruts mudslides, rock slides, um, snow, what else, Don? <laughs> and add to that the threat of the Omicron virus deviant variant or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, so we're not that concerned about that one. But we <laughs> yeah. have um, crew that come from all over Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. uh, Far south is Victoria, up to Campbell River, and over to Port Alberni. So, and we're kind of all stops in between. So, when something happens somewhere along the lines, everything grinds to a halt. Yeah, but in spite of all that, we have managed to, uh, you know, roll with the punches and punch back. We want to. We had to do this episode of Queer View Mirror because it, we feel it's kind of relevant and timely to do this episode. It's an issue about trans rights. Trans rights are human rights. And so many loud voices have been heard opposing the trans rights or opposing the transgender community. And we feel it is our incumbent duty to speak up and lend our voice to the issue. And I'll turn it over back to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you, Don. So, you know, Dawn's right. Um, on Queer View Mirror, on our social media and in our email, uh, we've been attacked um, by people who describe themselves as TERFs, which is trans exclusionary radical feminists. So, unfortunately, I hadn't heard this term until quite recently. So, we had to do a little digging. And we were joined by uh, dear friends of the show, Aaron LeBlanc, who was on season one, um, as well as Nicholas Sperling, who was also on season one. Um, and they're here to lend their expertise and talk about the whole movement. Okay, we are going to the interview right now. It was such a lovely conversation with Aaron and Nicola. You just gotta hear it. concept of TERF has been around long before the 2008 coining of the term. Uh, really? It's been around, you know, in the, in the 50s and 60s where um, the, the L's of the LGBTQ really did not espouse or support or acknowledge the T of the LGBTQ plus at mm -hmm. all. Um, it, they weren't called terrorists back then, but certainly were, were, were um, not enthusiastic about the existence. And, you know, um, Nicola quite, ac quite accurately stated that they're, they're trying to move away from turf because they're seeing it as a slur and they're trying to rebrand themselves, if I can use a business term, to, to gender critical, meaning they are, they are critical of the concept of gender. They're, they're really not buying into a born gender. Um, men are men and women are women, males are males, females are females, and, and that's there's no um, spectrum. That's the way, like that's the way it is, right? So to have a male suddenly claim to be a woman, it's like, yeah, no, no, can't, can't, that's, can't do that. And they're under, they feel that the trans community, both 
trans men and trans women are, are undermining their feminist movement and their ideals. And it's not a net zero sum game. I mean, I fight the same fight as my women colleagues um, in both of my career camps as an LGBTQ advocate, as well as in um, my profession. So I don't quite understand what their issue is with someone like myself. They seem to have this idea that somehow trans women benefit from male privilege. <laughs> and if society at large can't see that we're trans, and often they can't, there's no possible way for us to have that privilege. And it also assumes that there's privilege in growing up as uh, uh, trying to identify as a gender that doesn't align with who we are. And that's definitely not a privilege for any no. of us who are trans, no. having grown up in, in a, a body and, and, and a society that doesn't sort of fit with the way that we believe we should be interacting with the world. It just doesn't, um, it doesn't make sense that anyone would consider that to be a privilege. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't hold water. I mean, I, <clears throat> I mean, Nicola, you're absolutely correct. I mean, I've certainly witnessed um, various um, types of discrimination based on the fact that I'm a woman. Um, so that's why I say I'm fighting the, the same fight. So there's, there's, I have no male privilege in my current existence and didn't have male privilege in my previous existence because I, I didn't see myself ever as a man. Um, and, you know, when you struggle with that, um, that takes away a lot of your energy. And we both know what suffering with gender dysphoria is like. That ain't no privilege at all. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we struggle. <laughs> Um, and to carve out an existence for ourselves. So that doesn't hold, hold water either. It's just, I don't, I, you know, the, are they concerned about or um, just being afraid of the, what they deem to be the unknown? And they base a lot of their assumptions on really bad science, if science at all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's hard. How do you have a discussion with someone who completely, disavows the concept of born gender. Mm. I mean, what, what do you do with that, right? If they won't listen to, to science-based facts. So basically, what are the terms against? Like, they shouldn't be equal, like trans men or trans women should not be treated equally as a natural woman or a natural man? Is that what they're up in arms about? I don't, I don't think it's like, about not treating people equally is just not treating people as the gender that they say that they are. So it would be saying men and women should be treated equally or, or equitably perhaps, but they don't view trans women as women. They view trans women as men and they view trans men as women. So it's trying to force people into those boxes prior to saying, and now we think that you should have equality and equity as long as you stick within those boxes that, that we think you need to stick within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So does the, the whole um, viewpoint rely on the binary? Okay. Right, exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes, be because the, the um, turfs, I'll, I'll use the term, um, totally can't get their head around um, anyone that's not within the gender binary that is fluid. So they completely discount and ignore that, um, that community. So it doesn't even sort of come up in their rhetoric. It's just like they just ignore them because they don't know how to argue against it and they can't conceive of it. So they just ignore it. So you see, most of their focus is towards trans women, trans men as well, but most of the focus is towards trans women. Yes. Right. And if they put that much energy into actual feminist issues, they'd move the needle, needle a lot more. Mm. Um, with and and with our support right and a lot of their rhetoric aligns with men's rights activism rather than actual feminism and that's part of why i i've started calling turfs turs instead because they're trans exclusionary radicals for sure but i mean if they're not they're intersectional not and they're not supporting mm -hmm. all women how can you really call them feminists mm -hmm. um right. and i think the other big issue is as it relates to sexual orientation and trans people because one of the biggest criticisms that I receive from these transphobes is that I can't be a lesbian. I'm a woman who dates other women, that's it. And yeah. the people who date me consider themselves to be lesbians, but somehow if I use that term, 
I'm not actually a lesbian. I'm a heterosexual male in their eyes. And they make exactly. very clear all the time that that's how they view me. Yes, that, that's mm. exactly it. That's exactly it. So they're looking at sex assigned as birth as the only indicator and that your, your sexual orientation based upon that. <clears throat> and I, ha I face the same things because I, I myself am, am a gay woman. My partner is obviously a gay woman um, and she's cisgendered, which doesn't matter. But just to throw that out there, um, that's, that's exactly it. They view us um, as heterosexuals because we're, we are in a same gender relationship, but because we're trans, the, how can that be? So, you know, they're, they're trying to sort of ignore the science behind it and ignore the, the basis behind it and just try to fit the facts to their, you know, beliefs. It's, it's their you know, already it's, conceived perception. Yeah, exactly. It's confirmation and, bias to the nth degree. Right. And then they'll point out that uh, it's called a same sex relationship, not a same gender relationship. Mm -hmm. When, in fact, if, if you were to look at attraction among individuals, you'd be hard pressed to find a gay man that's interested in dating a trans woman or a, a lesbian woman that's interested in dating a trans man, because you're not basing your decision or your attraction on what someone's sex assigned at birth is, because it's not something that's obvious no. it's not a physical trait that you can exactly. observe when you're looking at someone you're just observing their their presentation at the time mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of this um you know once you start scratching at the surface a little bit the arguments just fall apart oh 100 percent they do absolutely yeah. but i want to go to uh, what scott said like why are you confused to what degree are you confused about the whole issue me yeah yeah Oh, no, I mean, I was just because I was reading like all these different authors, um, all these different articles mm -hmm. speaking to um, the issue, but it gets muddy. It gets muddy really quickly. Mm -hmm. So rather than say, you know, because statistically, I believe in this and the science proves this, this is the conclusion I've drawn. Mm -hmm. It seems to be based a lot more on um, emotions and feelings and third hand information and um, that's that's where my confusion is, is there doesn't seem to be any galvanizing um, uh, North Star to look towards, for want of a better term. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, just we at Queerview Mirror have been under attack for about six weeks now um, from <laughs> the turf community. Again, using that word because I don't know what else to use it as. Um, and, you know, to be fair, I mean, you know, I recognize for our people that, you know, we face discrimination every day, but I didn't realize um, until that started happening to that degree, just how um, vocal that very, very small minority is. Um, and I guess my next question is, um, why do they get so much press? Is it um, just the celebrities that are involved or? Well, um, you, give, you have J.K. Rowling in the forefront and then Dave Chappelle jumps in and somebody else, I don't know who else, but so far those are the two who are like, oh, but here's the irony though, Caitlyn Jenner seems to be on their side. Like, what's that all about? Isn't she trans herself? I mean, yeah, Caitlyn Jenner is a difficult one. Yes. She has so much privilege um, and she comes from such a wealthy background. It seems to have skewed her view of the world. And also so many of the connections that she's built up over her lifetime are within the Republican Party. And um, so for her to speak out in support of trans people and against these transphobic individuals that were labeling TERFs, would require that she cuts ties with a lot of those people that got her where she is. And I don't think she's willing to do that. So um, whether she recognizes that she's doing that or not, she's doing a significant disservice to trans people. Yeah, I mean, she, I mean, she didn't ask, and to her credit, I mean, she did not ask to be the spokesperson. Um, that was not what her mission was. That was sort of thrust upon her by the media and not the trans media or the trans community. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when you, when you look at the early, I mean, you could do a whole show just on Caitlyn Jenner and, you know, and, you know, Caitlyn Jenner, you like her or you don't. And that, and that's fine. I mean, I do have well, I to, used to like her. <laughs> I, I do give her credit because in my immediate community, she provided a launch pad for the conversations I needed to have. 
And so, you know, kudos to her for, for doing that and, and for providing that opportunity for me to use her experience as a, as a launch pad. Um, but when you look at her early times, just after, just after coming out, I mean, she said on, on the series, I am Kate, which was, which was an interesting series. And she took the opportunity to surround herself with some amazingly intelligent women, you know, Jenny Boylan, Kate Bernstein, Zach, Jen Richards. I mean, these are, are smart, smart women all in the trans community. Um, but when you like, would listen to her talk, she always talked about the trans community as, you know, they need to do this and they need to do that. Not mm -hmm. we need to do this and oh, we really? need to do that. So she didn't see herself as part of that community. And to, to Nicola's, Nicola's point, she is still from a different world of uh, benefit and great privilege and access to resources that none of us can even imagine um, throughout the process. Um, so, you know, she's in the, on the right, a Republican, she's gonna have those, those beliefs. Um, you know, it's gaining traction because of those names. I think there is a move, you know, under the, the Trump administration that the, that the right and the alt right has been giving a, a lot of space and a lot of airtime. Um, and I think there's, they've just sort of found people and found their voice and become loud about it, um, including she who must not be named, um, <laughs> to coin a term. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, but, you know, it, and it comes down to some of them, you know, some of the, the, the interviews I've done, and it's, it's about, um, you know, TERFs are, you know, in, unless you have a uterus, you are not a woman, and therefore you cannot be a feminist. Well, that falls flat on its face. You know, yeah. there, are, there are sex assigned female at birth that aren't born with uterus. There are women who have hysterectomies. Does that mean they're no longer women? You know, there's it just falls it just falls apart. It's it's a it's a straw house, and they they just keep putting more mud on that straw, hoping that it'll be thick enough to to uh, protect them. And I think part of the problem is that they're playing to people's emotions. They're not oh, providing factual mm -hmm. information. They're 100%. providing information that is riling people up, and they're trying to reach so that that term I used before the movable middle is one that I hate using in this situation because mm -hmm. it's sort of a, a political term where you have two valid issues and then you have people in the middle that can be swayed either way. Mm -hmm. We don't have two valid issues here. We have one side that is just seeking equal rights and protections and then we have one side that's saying we, we hate trans people and, and we want to strip them of their, their rights and protections. And um, so it's difficult to say there's a middle ground there, but at the same time, there's a group of people that are ignorant to this entire conversation and they can very easily be swayed based on emotional manipulation and i think that's exactly what's happening yeah that, and that's a great point and you know mm -hmm. i've seen it on the web so it must be true there are <laughs> you know there are trans women that are accosting all sorts of women in washrooms it must be true it's like it was on facebook no. <laughs> no and there's cis people that are doing that all over the world so i mean oh. if it's happening at a higher percentage that's a conversation but if it's yeah. just happening it, it you know there's guaranteed to be bad apples within any group of yeah. people anywhere mm -hmm. in the world so exactly. you can't use that as justification for saying you know these people don't deserve rights uh, it's like saying uh, you know a cis woman once raped another woman and therefore no cis women should be allowed in women's prisons like you know yeah. that's the that same type of argument that they're using against trans people exactly and it, and it gets that that vulnerable marginal right you know moving towards the more fervent right who was just foaming the water with fake facts, with 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 mm -hmm. with, with fake news, right? Yeah, and right. it's so easy for that news to get out there with social oh, media these days too. You absolutely. don't have fact checkers in the media that are making no. sure that the stories that are coming out <laughs> exactly. are legitimate. You just have people; anyone can just post on social media, and if they are yeah. able to rile up people's emotions, then they get attention. And people, well, if it's still a Netflix special, web. that's 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 already there. So. Well, I'm curious to know, Nicola and uh, Erin, uh, you're more personally involved in the issue because you are, in fact, trans, uh, trans people. How would you handle it uh, from your point, from where you are? Um, well, there's a, there's a number of, of ways that I look at it. Number one is I always use scientific-based fact. Um, okay, that's very at, good. I look at the background of the science. I look where how the science was was attained. I looked at the studies and the methodology, and 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 get you know 
solid grounded science from an, an authoritative body or an authoritative figure um you know and I, and I can i try and, and use it that way then then you know sometimes that just sometimes it works and sometimes they go oh you know i really didn't i really didn't know you know the other side of the coin well flip it over and, and this is this is what you'll see um there are times when it's um you know you can only go so far and then it's like you know what you're you're i can't move you and this is this is the way it is. So it's like you cut bait, you know. Yeah. Um, my my time is worth something, and I have so much energy, and I put energy into positivity. Um, and um, I will I will work as hard with an individual as they want to work and as they want to commit. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag someone if they're kicking and screaming for a long period of time. It's like okay, you know. Yeah. What? And, and Sounds so close to home, you know, and, <laughs> and the, the frustrating thing for me is that there's a lot of people that are that are part of this that the turf community, and I look at them in this case. So, but what have you done to, to talk about feminism? What have you done to to move the needle? You're you're you know living on the backs of those that came before you, you know, much like you know I self admit I'm you know benefiting on the back of the trans women that came before me in the, in the tough times of the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, and I bow down to them. They've made it possible for me to be where I am today. But some of us in, in the trans community have done more for feminism than a lot of the people in the turfs that are, that are, you know, against mm -hmm. us, you know, for, for what reason it's, it's not a net zero sum game. You don't, if you give me some support and some rights, it's not like you lose any, you know, we, we just get, we get a bigger group together. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you, Nicola, I think... how do you handle your detractors? And yeah, yours come closer me... to you too. In like personally, they come close to you, right? Up and down. <laughs> yes, I mean, I've had uh, a J.K. Rowling fan stalk me and show up at my home, post my address oh, on social media with my phone number and email and all of that. And uh, oh, at the peak of when J.K. Rowling threatened to sue me, I was getting ten hate messages a second. I had to do some math to figure it out, but it, you know, it's a ridiculous amount and. That was sort of the point when I realized that it doesn't make sense to try to respond to all of it. I have to be selective in what I respond to. So if someone raises a point that I think might resonate with that quote unquote movable middle, then I would address that point and make sure that my following and you know as many people as I can reach understand why whatever point is being made is not valid and I counter it um, with scientific fact and and um when people are just raising points because they're trying to rile me up or uh, you know they've already been disproven many times and and they're not getting the attention of the the general public i just don't see the need to respond to that because my time is is too valuable to to waste it on that what a great interview, Scott. As usual, I always learn a lot from these two wonderful women. It's so glad that we are connected with such people who have the knowledge, and not only the knowledge, the experience, and the enthusiasm, and the zeal, and the dedication to fight this good fight. As we mentioned in the interview, we are up for a fight, but we want to keep it clean. We're not going to go the dirty way of fighting this thing. And one thing that stood out in the interview was what Aaron mentioned, that silence is tacit approval. And we will not do that here on Queer View Mirror. Right, Scott? That's right. I um, did some more research and digging after that interview, and I found some really telling statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, about half of transgender individuals earn $15,000 a year or less, even oh. though 71% of them have some level of post-secondary education. Um, and that same study found that um, only 37% of respondents were employed full time. Um, while the National Transgender Discrimination Survey in the US found that transgender people experience double the rate of unemployment compared to the general population. And let's just talk about our young people for one moment. Here in British Columbia, one in four queer and trans youth are forced out of their homes due to severe family conflict. Among homeless youth in BC, one in three are females and one in four, sorry, one in 10 are males and they all self-identify as queer, trans or questioning. The statistics are frightening. Yeah, um, they are. 
and you know, I, I don't get it with these turfs. Like this is clearly a marginalized group. There are people, these, you know, a large member of the turfs are uh, identify as lesbian, gay, or bisexual. And, you know, talk about um, kicking someone when they're down. Mm -hmm. I can understand uh, like why a trans person has to go through what he, she or he has to go through already. Because that is not a choice. That is something they are born into and they have to deal with it from a social level, a medical level, a mental level, a financial level, from all different aspects. I mean, homophobia is bad enough as it is. And then you put on transphobia on top of that. I mean, it's just a, a whole new ball game. And you know, like you said, why are you going to kick somebody who is who's down already? And with that, to speak to that, I still can understand why a logical, rational, decent human being would actually choose. And now this is a choice. This is the clear choice. Why would you choose to be a turf to somebody who excludes, to somebody who's radical? I mean, just those two terms, exclusionary and radical. You identify with such a group? Why? What reason? What logical, humane reason would there be? to identify yourself as a turf. I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of out of turn here. What do you I know, Scott? You better stop me. <laughs> well done. I mean, you know, bigotry is awful. You know, no matter what you're discriminating against and no matter where you're coming from, you know, there is just no room for it in our society today. What a great show. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nicola and Aaron. We love you. We are so grateful for all you contribute, not only to the show, but to the world. Um, I think the world is a much richer place with you in it, and we certainly appreciate that. Keep watching this season. We've got some amazing guests coming up. We've got some really great uh, interviews, um, and uh, we're super excited to be coming back to you with season two. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Perfect. And if you miss an episode, you can always catch full episodes on QueerViewMirror.com. And as uh, we already mentioned in an interview and in other parts of this episode, we will continue to fight a good fight. Silence is tacit approval, and we will not be silent on this issue. See you next time on Queer View Mirror. Hey, now I'm glad you're here. I want to hear your point of view. Just might learn something that I never knew.